Hey everybody, Marcus Crawford here with the Idaho Quadcopter Channel. Hey, I'm out at Julius Kleiner Park today. Uh, Temperature-wise, it's in the uh, mid-80s, high 80s, I guess. Uh, very little wind, a uh, little bit of smoke in the air, so you'll see that when I get the drone up in the air. So visibility is like down to six miles uh, because of the little bit of haze. However, uh, that's not what we're interested in today. today. I have the, uh, the Hubson uh, Ace Pro. As most of you know, uh, this is the same drone as the EXO uh, Blackhawk 2. I have both drones and I can tell you, I've flown them both, I've looked them over pretty carefully. It's the same drone. Uh, they both have internal memory, a 64 megabit internal memory, uh, and then you can also record to an SD card. You can, you can save at 200 megabits, in other words, more data, uh, if you save to the internal memory. Uh, you're limited to 100 megabits when you save to the micro SD card and that's what we're going to do today and when we go into the menu we're going to look at how you adjust that uh, bit rate uh, for the video. Uh, but what are we doing today? I'm going to take this drone up and they're doing some construction on the other side of the park that we looked at recently. In fact I, I had the, uh, the Blackhawk 2 Pro and we went out there and looked at that. Well, I've got some more information in, uh, on that, and it looks like they poured some concrete today. So we'll just go over there and take a peek and uh, maybe look at some other stuff. So let's quit messing around and let's get the uh, Hubson Ace Pro in the air. Okay, we're all connected up. I've got the drone fired up, the controller, and let's get the app going right now. Uh, and I did start a screen recording so you guys can see what's going on, the X Hubson 2 app. And yeah, it, uh, well, let's see, it was showing me the Xeno 2 there, so uh, that is a mistake. Yeah, there it goes, it switched to the Ace Pro, so that's good. Uh, so it did automatically select. I, I, the last drone I flew with the app was the Xeno 2, so that's why it had that. But it's got the Ace Pro up here, so we're going to click on that. And uh, yeah, it says, yeah, yeah, ready to fly. Uh, let's see, obstacle avoidance, there they go into that whole rigmarole about how they want you to calibrate it. Uh, you know, I don't have to calibrate the obstacle avoidance on my DJI drone every time, so I don't know, it's kind of a crazy deal. And it gives you, I, I guess, a, a, a website there that you can go to. Probably need to try that sometime. Uh, but anyway, uh, let's look at the, I like this device status list. This is a handy deal that uh, Hubson does, and it tells you if you need any calibrations. As you can see, it's not asking for either compass or gyro uh, calibration. Optical flow state, it always says low quality when the drone is on the ground. That goes away once it's in the air. Uh, and then it shows us our SD card is ready to go, etc. Power's at 93% because I had, the last time I, well, I used this battery to do the last firmware update. So, uh, so before we take off, we need to go in and look at bit rate here. And uh, I am in, I'm in, uh, well, let's see, I probably need to switch to video mode. Save location, yeah, SD card. And maybe I probably, I, I, let's, let's format the memory card so it's like uh, what, the drone wants to see. I formatted it on my computer, but it's always a good idea to format your memory card on the device that you're using, and it says formatted successfully, so let's go back in there. Let's go into auto, and there we get our picture back. Let's click on that again, uh, and let's see, can I switch to, yeah, in order to keep, yeah, you, said you can't, so what I want to look at is that bit rate, and I don't, I guess, I cannot see it until we're in the air. So let's go ahead and, uh, let's go ahead and take off. It looks like I probably won't be able to get into that part of the menu until I'm in video mode, and it looks like I need to be in the air to do that. So uh, let's go ahead and do, uh, we got 14 satellites, and everything's ready to go. Let's do an auto takeoff. And sure you want to take off? Yes, I am. And this is a noisy little drone. You can see it there. Uh, signal poor, aircraft disconnected, and I'm right in front of it. So it just landed. Well, there you go. As soon as I'm uh, bragging on the uh, Hubson drone, <laughs> 
uh, it's right in front of us and it uh, disconnects. So I don't know. Let's uh, let's try that again. I am going to unplug the cable, plug it back in. <laughs> uh, okay. <laughs> uh, gosh darn it. Uh, every time I tell you that it's uh, that it's a good product, then something like that happens. So that's not good. That is officially not good. Let's take off again and see what happens here. At least the drone just landed when it disconnected, right? Yeah, obstacle avoidance is off. USB disconnected again. Yeah. Oh, now we got, now we're connected again. <laughs> uh, we may or may not get a flight in here. Okay, tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to cycle everything, uh, shut everything down, fire it all back up, and we're going to try this again. Okay, so uh, we're going through the whole thing again. We got the device status list again. Let's look at that. Uh, yeah, nothing changed there. So uh, let's uh, let's try this one more time. Now, one change that I did make is I put my phone in airplane mode. I've had people tell me that that can make a difference on hubs and drones. Who knows, maybe, let's give it a try. We're down to 88% battery. Uh, but those kind of disconnects, uh, man, they, they just, they do not give you uh, a lot of faith in the product. So let's go ahead and uh, hit an automated takeoff again, just like we did before. And so far so good. Let's switch to video mode. And let's go back into that, uh, menu do, 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 night mode HDI save location so this I thought gave us a uh, yeah there's the video bit right right there okay I was just clicking on the wrong button so when 4k 30 bit right right there you can go down to 10 or 100 is where we want to leave it but watch I'm telling it it's saving to the SD card so it won't stay at yeah, we won't stay at 200. It'll drop back down to 100. But 100 is good enough for what we're doing. So uh, I'm starting recording now. And uh, gosh, guys, I don't know if uh, if putting the phone in airplane mode made a difference or not. I've been told that some people have told me that that makes a big deal on hubs and drones. So maybe so. So, but let's yaw the drone around. And again, we do have uh, obstacle avoidance off here. Uh, but let's, uh, in fact, we ought to turn that on. Okay, I'm going to turn obstacle avoidance on here. We're going to force it open. Maybe. There we go. So obstacle avoidance is on. That's just, you know, let's just try it out, even though we didn't uh, do what they wanted. And you can see it looks like it's working correct. You can see on the screen there. And I'm trying to... Yeah, as I push forward, it's moving around us. So let me push forward again. And the drone moves around us. So it's working perfectly. So good for good for Hubson on that one. Okay. So let's uh let's start off here by doing a uh, a drony and I'm going to go up uh, pretty darn fast on this one as we've got some trees behind us. So uh uh, we're in normal mode, reverse and up now. And I'm hitting pretty hard on the up stick there. And I'm going to get this guy up in the air a ways because uh, it is a noisy drone and I don't want to be bugging people. So uh, we're about, let's even go a little higher than that. Yeah, we're about 46 meters high. So that is high enough that Boy, I can still hear the drone uh, from here rather loudly. And then uh, look at that crooked horizon. So let's see if we can, let's first let's yaw it around and see if we can straighten that out. You know what's odd about this is Hubson drones prior to this, they were always really good with their horizon. I flew the Xeno 2 the other day and the horizon was perfect. Now this guy, you can adjust it. So that's what we're gonna do. And you can see me adjusting it there on screen. That looks about right. We're at negative 
So let's see if it stays that way, right? So I will say this, the drone took off at a little bit of an angle because there's a hillside here that we took off on. So I suppose that could affect the gyro thinking what is level, right? So, uh, okay, so we're done with that. Uh, let's uh, let's kind of give you a quick look around here. Moving forward again, we're in normal mode and uh, just moving over the top of the, uh, I'll drop the camera down so you can see where I am. You can see me standing down there. And again, in normal mode, the drone is not moving very fast here. 3.1 meters, so that is more like uh, film mode. So let's go into sport mode. Let me adjust it and let's try that because we just weren't getting the speed there that I would expect us to get. Drop that gimbal back down. Full stick forward and yeah, there it kicked the gimbal down in sport mode. Yeah, and it's, it's moving right up to speed there. So we're going across the pond Cross the second pond there. Let's go ahead and steer it out across the field, across the street here. Miss that car right there. And yeah, the drone is handling fine right now. And it, uh, the, you know, even though it kicked the camera down, uh, it appears that the horizon is staying good. Now, we're not going to cross that street, but I'm going to come to a stop right there. And then, yeah, let's see if we can pick. Whoops, boy, oh boy, I really kicked that camera up, didn't I? Yeah, I don't know. It's, uh, it's the, the, wheel, uh, the, the wheel is very, wow, very, very sensitive. And, uh, you know, my FPV feed is... Uh, yeah, I don't know. Just the camera either goes there's I can't get it in that middle mode. So uh, I guess we're just going to leave it right there. When I when I try and go up, well, let's put it in normal mode or that's film mode. And yeah, let's see if we can get that camera where we need it to be. Now, that's weird. Why? Why is my camera kicking around like that? That is strange. Struggling to get that camera adjusted. Uh, don't know what that's about. Let's go ahead and turn it around. And we did get uh, an obstacle avoidance warning, yeah, uh, a couple of times there. And we're just up, you know, we're in the middle of a field. So nothing, uh, nothing in front of the drone. And uh, even though our signal bars, we got all of our bars, I can tell you that FPV wise, yeah, it's kind of, kind of strange. I'm, I'm getting definitely break up on FPV and I am pointed straight towards the drone flat part of the antenna going towards the drone, so we're facing directly towards it. Okay, so in film mode here, let's go full stick forward and let's look at the speed. And yeah, very slow at uh, about two meters per second, a little less than two meters per second. Let's kick it up into normal mode. And again, we're getting some falsing on that obstacle avoidance. So I'll tell you what I'm going to do, kids. I'm going to shut that off. And I think that is what's affecting our speed, too, as well. So let's turn OA off. Now that I think about it, that is what was ex I, I'm, I'm sure was uh, affecting our speed. So now let's kick it forward in normal mode. And yeah, we're going to kick get right up to speed here. So it limits the speed even in normal mode if you have obstacle avoidance on uh, it looked like about three and a half meters per second which makes sense you know that it gives it time to to uh, not run into things so uh, yeah I you know I'm telling you uh, the drone is working a lot better with OA off so it tells me that that obstacle avoidance is definitely using uh, some of the processing power of this drone uh, to fly. So everything is smoother. <laughs> everything is smoother with that obstacle avoidance off. So, okay, as promised, you guys know where uh, we talked about the uh, construction going on. We're down to 55% battery here, so let's not mess around. I'm sorry we spent so much time there uh, with with some issues with the drone but uh, seems to be working fine now I, I guess what I can tell you is 
as soon as I put my iPhone in airplane mode, I no longer got those disconnects, so maybe that's, that's a good tip. Okay, let's stop right here, and we should be able to do an orbit around this thing now without bothering anybody. I'm going to go. Uh, I'm going to go into film mode, and uh, and let's just do a manual. Well, we can even maybe we can even get closer than that. So let's move closer yet. So I found out what these are, and you know, a lot of people on that last video that I did with the Blackhawk 2 Pro talking about this, a lot of people correctly pointed out that uh, no, it, this was not some kind of a building going in here. It was clearly some kind of a ball court or something. And you can see the, the uh, construction people are pulling out, so they've probably done most of their work for the day, but uh, what these are are pickleball courts. And we'll talk more about that in a second. You know, what's funny is if, if I had the DJI Mini 3, I would be flying a lot lower right now. But this thing is so loud that I just don't want uh, to bother people with a drone buzzing around, you know. I, I'm, I'm sensitive to those kind of things. And, and I, you should be if you fly a drone. Because uh, we all want to keep places like this open for us to fly and uh, you know just being a good citizen I guess and this is a this is one noisy drone so you are not going to be stealthy and in fact I guarantee you even uh, at this uh, they're they're probably uh, hearing this uh, this drone you, you, I'm sure where they're at you could hear this drone overhead Okay, let's pick up that camera and do a little bit of a reveal here. And I just realized I was pointing away from the drone, so when it says signal poor, whoops, and there I overshot with the gimbal again. See, I didn't see that on FPV, and I was, I'll be honest with you, I was pointed directly away from the drone. I need to look at the adjustment on this uh, gimbal wheel on this thing, because I'm struggling to uh, to keep that camera where I want it. Okay, speaking of uh, the camera, I want to show you, we're going to look at some more uh, with regard to the, uh, those pickleball courts. I'm sorry, I you know, was focusing on two things at once here. Can't walk and chew gum at the same time. So this complex you see here is called Brie, and this is a... Uh, 55 plus condo development and it looks like they got some pretty cool stuff there right well one of the things is they wanted some pickleball courts and they don't have room for them in that development so what I was told is they paid for these pickleball courts uh, in Julius Kleiner Park here as you can see, right across the street, there's the pickleball courts. Uh, very convenient uh, to their development. Yeah, it's telling me we're at 40% battery. Uh, so we're not going to mess around too long. Uh, but let's go ahead and put this guy back in normal mode. Maybe, there we go. There's normal mode. And let's, uh, let's go over the top of... Uh, we're, not, we're not going to... Uh, uh, fly over uh, anything where people are, but we're going to go over the top of the building here. And just kind of show you uh, what all is here. So if you look behind this building, it's uh, it's where the, uh, uh, the uh, shopping center is. So we're going to stop right there. And we're going to come back this way. Or at least I'm going to try. My FPV is definitely uh, is getting really choppy. So, yeah, doggone it. That's, that's the problem. You know, I'm telling you. Uh, you know, I would just earlier was bragging on this drone. And I'm just telling you, this problems like this are so frustrating. When you cannot accurately uh, get FPV and get a good signal. And this has got... Uh, Sync Lease 3, and admittedly, this is a challenging Wi-Fi environment, 
uh, it just makes it tough to get the shot you want. But anyway, this is the uh, this is the the development here. Maybe we can kind of go around the. Let's go back into uh, film mode and let's kind of see if we can go around the other side here and give you a look at what this development looks like. Yeah, let's grab some altitude here. Let's get a little higher and see if that'll help our signal some. And you can see it's right across from the park. Yeah, I think I can go back into normal mode here and get around here a little faster. So that's it. And so it's these uh, folks in this development that paid for those pickleball courts right across the street there. And I'm sure that uh, the residents there will get good use out of them, which is a good thing. And they're also open to the public, right? So it's a win-win situation. Battery's down to 30%. So uh, let's go ahead and bring this guy home. Let's just kick it across here. And I'm on the other side of the pond there, so this is going to be easy. You can see the, uh, the famous west-facing band shell there uh, that uh, they, they made good use of it in the summertime. They were, uh, there were uh, kids' programs going on there. And I am right over here on the other side of the pond. Let's start bringing this guy down. And, uh, and let's put it in uh, auto return and let's see if we can get a, uh, a, an odd, I see the drone right in front of me there, let's see if we can get a, uh, a precision landing. Takeoff point, okay. And I think what the drone will do uh, at that point is, let's just see if it, I, I think it disables video on its own. We'll see. We'll just leave the video on. We'll see what it says on the screen. Let me drop the camera down. And you know, so the scroll wheel for the camera is, is working pretty good now. Data preparation, please wait. And there's the, you know, it's pretty damn close if you look at that. And I noticed that it reduced uh, my FPV. And it's going to hit it. Searching for drone apron. Well, I thought I was going to hit it. We'll see here. It's pretty close. We're just going to let it land. I mean, it's not going to hurt it to be, uh, to e even if it, even if it, if we uh, mow a little grass. But look at it it's starting to zero in. Although usually you'll see a target when it zeroes in, and we're not seeing that at all. It picked up the camera. Yeah, it's definitely going to be a little off the pad. So it's right next to it. It landed in the grass there, as you can see. And it'll ask us, yeah, well, it shut off recording, it looks like, automatically. So that's a good thing. Okie dokie, that was an interesting flight. Let me get everything shut down, and we'll do a quick conclusion. Hey, OK, <laughs> the Hubson Ace Pro, uh, I, I started off in my introduction kind of bragging on this drone, saying, hey, it's not so bad. And then we had a number of issues when we were up flying it. So, you know, make your own decision uh, on, on a drone like this. Uh, so we had those disconnects initially when I took off. We, you saw that twice. I cycled everything. And then when I cycled it that second time, I put my phone in airplane mode. And that may have made a difference. I've been told before that that makes a difference uh, with, like, the... Hubson Xeno Mini Pro, uh, and it did seem to make a difference with that drone, so evidently this guy is the same. So I'm going to tell you, if you fly this guy or if you fly the Black Hawk 2 Pro, uh, you're definitely going to want to put your phone into airplane mode when you take off to avoid those disconnects, uh, because once we did that, we didn't have any problems. The other thing is, uh, we instantly had a very crooked horizon, however, once I adjusted it out with the adjustment that's in the software, it was fine for the rest of the flight. Now, if you look at our, our uh, landing pad there, we're on a little bit of a hill here, so it's at an angle. Could, could that have 
affected the, the takeoff point and then the gyro thought, you know, so maybe that's possible, right? So I'll give it the benefit of the doubt there because once we did adjust it, uh, it was fine. Now, uh, obstacle avoidance, uh, and again, I've never uh, 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 calibrated the obstacle avoidance on this guy. Might do it one of these days, I don't know. I've done it on the Xeno Mini Pro and it was a long, difficult, involved process, so I just don't know if it's worth the time. Then the other thing uh, that I should have thought of when I first took off is it, it was, uh, this, it was affecting the speed of the drone. So when obstacle avoidance is on, it keeps the drone down to about three or three and a half meters per second. So keep bear that in mind. For that reason and that reason alone, for the most part, I'm just gonna tell you, shut obstacle avoidance off if you've got this guy, it's gonna save you a lot of grief. The flip side of that coin is, to be fair, when we had it down low here, it was in bypass mode and it worked perfectly. As I moved it towards me, it went around us, so that part of it worked good. Now, what didn't work so good is we were up there uh, in the air and we saw some falsing, right, where it was showing obstacle avoidance and it was, you know, we were 46 meters up in the air, so there couldn't have been anything going on there. Uh, so then from there, we flew back over here. We tried out sport mode. It worked perfectly. Now, as you would think in sport, as you would expect in sport mode, it kicks the camera up to avoid looking at the nose of the drone. That's common with a lot of drones. Uh, however, like DJI solved that on the Mini 3 and Mini 3 Pro. Uh, but that aside, it's, you know, a fairly speedy drone. It works fine in sport mode. Other than that, I had some issues though with controlling the, uh, the gimbal, moving it up and down. And I'm not sure what that was about. I'll have to look at the adjustments and, and maybe slow that down because it just didn't, I couldn't get it to stop where I need it to be. So there's a couple of uh, adjustments there that you can do that, that, that tells you how fast it moves and then how fast it goes beyond when you let go of the, uh, of the scroll wheel. So I'll have to mess around with that and, and see if I can get that adjusted. That could very well be an adjustment, but I don't remember it being like that the last time I flew it. So I don't know. Of course, I did just do a firmware update, so that could have reset that stuff, now that I think about it. Uh, and then we also had uh, some signal issues with this guy. You saw I tried to show you the, uh, I showed you the construction of the pickleball courts over there, uh, and then I showed you the, the, the debris development that's paying for those pickleball courts. And, and what I did is I went over the top of it and then tried to do an orbit around it. And it was just tough because my FPV signal was so choppy that you know you can't keep the camera pointed where you want it pointed and that's a problem and I guarantee you that if I'd have had the Air 2S or the Mini 3 Pro I wouldn't have had those kind of problems. Uh, so anyway uh, that's about it. Uh, take it uh, take all that for what it's worth. Uh, I mean it's still it's you know it, it, it well, you guys will have seen the video already I expect the uh, video quality to be okay. Uh, so yeah the uh, let me see if I can get these props out of the way here. The uh, Hubson Ace Pro. Uh, remember again, I want to remind you, if you buy this in the United States, you're not going to be able to activate it. So uh, this is mostly uh, for outside of the United States. If you're in the US, if you want this same drone, it's going to be the Blackhawk 2 Pro from EXO. This is Marcus Crawford with the Idaho Quadcopter Channel out. And if you like this kind of content, please consider subscribing to my channel. Most of all, I appreciate you taking the time to look at this video. And we will see you on the next one. Uh, I doubt I'll be flying uh, the, uh, the Ace Pro on the next one. But uh, in any case, we'll see you guys later. Bye now.